your strength. Come on, bless him for your strength. Yes, God, we bless you. We give you honor, Jesus. The Lord, everybody. Say praise the Lord again. Come on, somebody give the Lord a great big hand praise. Amen. He's certainly worthy to be praised. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. And truly, God is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. We certainly bless God for everybody that's here right now. We thank God for those in social media land. Amen. As we come to praise and lift up the name of Jesus on this Sunday, amen, because God is certainly worthy to be praised. Amen. I know God has been good to you because God has been good to me. And the Bible tells me that God is no respecter of persons. So I know that if God is blessing your household, if God is working miracles in your life, then he's doing the same thing in my life and the lives of many other people. Amen. And we may be in the midst of COVID-19 and, and fires and earthquakes and hurricanes and things of that nature going on around us. Amen. But how many know that God is still good? Come on. He's still worthy to be praised. He's still worthy to be magnified. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. That's still my song. Amen. Jesus can work it out if you let him. That's still my song. Come on. Amen. He's always worthy to be praised. Always worthy to be magnified. And we bless his holy name on this Sunday. Amen. We lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to ask you to uh, stand with us. Amen. As we go before the Lord and a word of prayer. And then we're going to have the praise team come out and they're going to sing to the glory of the Lord. And we want everybody here and everybody in social media land to just join in with us for this next hour as we lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. As we praise and magnify his holy name. At this time, if you would, just bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being good and merciful and kind and looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We thank you, Lord, that you are that very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, Lord, that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, dear God. Lord, you've been our bridge over troubled waters, oh God. You've been our way out of no way, Father. Lord, you were there all the time, oh God. That, that friend that sticks closer than a brother, dear God. That peace in the midst of the storm. Father, we thank you for it right Right now in the name of Jesus and we ask that you would bless us father as we go forward this morning oh God to praise and lift up your holy name oh God and praise and adoration and in worship oh God father that you would join us in the midst of this service oh God that you would speak to our hearts this day oh God that you would feed us till we want no more dear father in the name of Jesus we bless your holy name dear God we honor you to 
today, oh God, for who you are, oh God. In the name of your loving son, Jesus, we say thank you, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he worthy to be praised? He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be glorified this day. In the name of Jesus, we bless you right now, Lord. We bless you, Lord, for your goodness. We bless you for your mercy, oh God. We bless you for your grace, oh, oh God. We just want to thank you right now, Lord. We just want to take time out, Lord, just say thank you for being good, oh God. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Oh. Lord, thank you for being the joy and the strength of our lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, somebody use that name. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, isn't God good? Uh, isn't he worthy to be praised? Uh, isn't he worthy to be magnified? Uh, isn't he worthy to be lifted up? Uh, isn't he worthy to be honored today? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, come on, somebody scream Jesus. Uh, come on, somebody scream Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy, oh God. Always worthy to be praised. Always worthy to be magnified. Always worthy of the glory, oh God. Our sovereign God that you are, we thank you this day, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we just ask for your guidance that you would speak a word to us today, oh God. Lord, that you would feed us, oh God, of your word, oh God, that we may grow thereby and, and produce fruit after its kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. Come on. So we're not going to act like we don't know Jesus today. We're not going to act like we're strange to one another. I know we're not meeting as regular as we normally would meet before the COVID-19. Amen. But how many know that God is still God? The Word of God tells us in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So whatever you were doing before COVID-19, if you had given God your whole heart, amen, then keep offering your whole heart to God. Keep offering your entire being to God because he's always worthy to be praised. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to call, amen, Emmanuel Temple praise team to come and sing to the glory of God. And we just want you guys to remain standing as, amen, as they sing to us, amen. And if you got to sit, sit, amen. But let's, let's praise the Lord today, amen. All right. Come on. In Jesus' name, he's worthy. Come on, let's praise the name of the Lord. Come on, give God a hand praise. Did you come to bless the name of the Lord today? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. How many know that when praises go up, what comes down? Blessings come down. So we're going to lift up a praise today. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, put your hands together right here. Come on. your name, your holy name, I praise your name, not just today, but always, now and forever, Lord, I praise your name, come on, say God, pray. I praise your name, come on, your holy name, come on, I pray, I praise your name, your holy name, I praise your name, not just today.
got a blessing just for you. It has your name on it. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. And we thank you. Just for another day, we thank you for this opportunity to bless your name, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you honor. We worship you. This is not just for the praise team, but God, collectively in this room, we give you glory. And we thank you. Can I just get you guys to just say hallelujah? Come on, begin to send up praises to our king. God, we worship you. God, we bless you. There's nobody like you, Lord. We give you glory. Come on, hands lifted in the room. We bless your name, God. We give you glory, Jesus. There's nobody like you. Yes, you are worthy. Come on, let's sing. You are worthy. You are worthy. My praise.
with the Lord. It's a good thing that we have a mind to praise him. Amen. Whether you be here in this building or at home or wherever you are, God is always worthy to be praised. And we certainly bless the praise team, amen, for allowing the Lord to use them on today. And I always like to think of them not as entertainers, but as ushers ushering in the presence of the Lord and as the herald does when the king is approaching, they sound out the trumpets and make a joyful noise and let them know that the king is coming. The king is present. The word of God tells us in the book of Psalms that, amen, and the multitude of the people is the king honored. 
Amen. So we come together to lift up our great big Savior. Amen. He's always worthy to be praised and magnified. And again, we thank the Lord for those in social media land. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to come to you by way of YouTube and Facebook and all of the other means of, of uh, streaming. Amen. We bless God. Amen. For the opportunity to do so. And at this time, if you would, let us go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7. 2 Kings, chapter number 7. And we're going to start at verse number 1. 2 Kings 7 and 1. And I'm asking you to pray with me and for me as we break the bread of life. Amen. That someone will be blessed and encouraged and motivated and inspired to keep on serving the Lord regardless of the circumstances regardless of COVID-19 regardless of death that's around us and, and all of the things that we encounter in this life and while you're searching I do want to just extend a again a heartfelt condolence that I meant to uh, extend on last Sunday and uh, the way the service went I just totally uh, forgot and when I remembered it was the service was over with but I want to extend a heartfelt condolence amen to sister Chantel Whittier and elder Victor Whittier and the loss of sister Chantel's brother amen um, and I was able to attend the wake and the funeral on this past uh, uh, Wednesday amen and we we thank the Lord amen for the opportunity to be there and for those that were able to make it I know Sometimes during the week, amen, it's hard to get away from these jobs. If it's not an immediate loved one, they won't give you any uh, leave of absence or anything along that not line. And I do want to thank Mother Buchanan for getting that condolence out there, amen, to Elder Victor and Sister Chantel. Amen. That's good looking out. I appreciate that. Amen. And I thank the Lord for all of the prayers, amen, for each and every one. And those of you that may have lost a loved one or, or got a loved one that's sick or something I may not be knowledgeable of or whatever I'm praying for you and your families, amen, because, amen, everybody is important and everybody means something to me and everybody certainly means something to the Lord, amen. And I just want to wish all the folks a, a happy birthday that had birthdays, amen, on these past few weeks and days, amen. A lot of birthdays going on. I think Evangelist Riney, amen, had a birthday on Friday and Evangelist Alexander had a birthday, um, I've forgotten exactly what day, Wednesday, amen, on Wednesday, Amen. So, but look, in life, people are coming and going in life. Remember that. There are folks coming and going. Just with the, every second somebody is dying and every second somebody is being born somewhere in this world. Somewhere in this world. And uh, so the, the privilege, and we're going to get to our reading, but the privilege of being able to live life for whatever length of time that is, it's a privilege, and while we are extended that privilege from our Lord, we need to make good use of this time because we don't know when our last breath will be. We don't know when God will say, okay, it's your time. You're finished. It's time to come home, and it's not that anybody that has passed away already was bad and God just took them because they were so bad, but each and every one of us, we have an assignment, and you need to find out what your assignment is, and you need to be doing what God gave you life to do the scripture tells us if you don't know anything else the scripture tells us we were, cre we were created to make his praise glorious and then if you say well okay I understand that what is my assignment as far as work in the ministry and uh, the book of St. Matthew 28 18 through 20 we have the a great commission to go into all the world and to preach the gospel so you may not be going overseas or this that or the other but whoever you may have access to to tell them about Jesus you need to be telling them about Jesus Amen? So all of us have something to do. At this time, from 2 Kings chapter 7, I'm just going to read down through verse number 9. But I do encourage you in your spare time to read this entire chapter, the preceding chapter, chapter 6, and this chapter, so you can get a full understanding of what's going on here. But 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 1 reads, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of 
a fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God. So he's talking to Elijah, Elisha. And he says, and, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. So what's going on here is you got this man, this second guessing the man of God. And he says, the only way God is going to send where, where we're buying flour for this amount is if God opened the windows of heaven and poured out a blessing. And, and Elisha told him, Elisha's response was, uh, it's going to happen tomorrow. But you won't, you will see it, but you won't be able to eat of it. And verse 3 says, And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? And verse 4 says, If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we, sh we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the a uh, uh, host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. And verse 5 says, And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. And, their, and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And verse number 8 says, And when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink, and carried then silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and then into another tent, and carried this also, and went in and hid it. And the last verse, verse 9 says, Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is, is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word, and we just ask you to bless us, O oh God, to apply your word to our lives, O oh God, that fruit may grow thereby to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And while you're still standing, if you would, just hold your Bibles over your head and repeat the saying on the screen after me. I'm excited and enthusiastic about the living word of God. I will read it. I will study it. I will live it. And with God's help, I will share it. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Amen. And that's just a mantra that, amen, anybody that's a Christian, amen, can quote that. It's not, it doesn't belong to Emmanuel Temple. It belongs to the people of God. Amen. All right. Now, this is a wonderful, wonderful message that God has sent us today. Amen. This is a message of deliverance and a message to remind us that God is in control and that God has the final say. So the title of this message today is Why Sit Until We Die? Why Sit Until We Die? Again, we read from 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number one, uh, verses 1 through 9. And um, again, I encourage you to, on your spare time, Go back and read chapter 6 and then read the entire chapter 7. And I'll try to fill in the blanks as much as I can, amen, for you. Amen. So here we have a famine in the land. And this famine is in Samaria because they were taken captive by the Syrian army. And the Syrian king, Benadad, had hemmed up the city to where they couldn't get any fresh water, they couldn't get any food, they were starving just about to death, and they even talked about cannibalism at one point. They were, they were doing bad. And God's always watching his people, no matter how rebellious or troublesome or disobedient they were, somebody is praying. And because somebody is praying, God sends an answer, and God sends deliverance to his people. Amen. In this case, amen, the prophet Elisha, who is the successor of Elijah. In other words, he's the one that Elijah anointed 
to be his successor or to follow up behind him. And he received a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And the thing about Elisha was that uh, when, you, when you read the story in depth, you'll see that the king of ben also had a contract out on Elisha. He wanted him dead because every time the king of Syria tried to do something against the people of God, Elisha would tell the king, Jehoram, what was about to take place. He was, his prophecy was so accurate that Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, said, somebody in our camp is leaking news. We got a, we got a, we got a mole in the house. We, we got somebody that's, that's sharing our personal information about what we're about to do. And every time we uh, come upon Israel, they already know how to counter us. But then somebody told him, well, no, they got a prophet there by the name of Elisha, and the Lord show him things and speak through him, and that's why we keep not being successful. And so the king of Syria says, so what I'll do, I'll just kill the person, the prophet, that's given them this information. So the story goes on that God anointed Elisha to go to King Jehoram and to let him know that tomorrow... Because of the prayers you all, because of the fasting, because of the waiting on God, God gave Elisha a word. He says, tomorrow, what they are buying flour for and wheat for today is going to be a whole lot less expensive. And everybody's going to be enjoying uh, uh, life again in Samaria. And they'll be at the gates like they did in times past, uh, selling and buying uh, necessary uh, foods that they need. But there was a man next to Jehoram, which was the king's armor bearers per se, or his advisor, and he smart mouthed Elisha, Elisha and says, yeah, the only way that's going to happen is if, if God open up uh, heaven and pour out blessings like that upon us immediately for that to happen tomorrow. And so Elisha said, oh, it's going to happen tomorrow, like I said. You will see it. This is what he said to the man. But you won't be able to eat thereof. And, and the reason I'm encouraging you to read this entire chapter is because at the last couple of verses of this particular chapter, uh, you're going to see that the, the prophecy came true, and this man, he saw it, but he wasn't able to eat. He, he fell dead, amen. A, a bad, uh, something bad happened to him. I'm going to keep a little suspense there so you can go and read it. And he fell dead. So he saw all of this happen, but he wasn't able to enjoy it. And so... The king of, uh, of uh, Syria wanted Elisha dead. He wanted him out of the picture. But God used the unlikely, unseemingly people to do the most helpful things and, and that's going to bless his people. I mean, so here we go to verse number three. And we read, it says, And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? That's why our message is, well, why sit until we die? And they said, look, we're lepers. And let me tell you something about the, the disease of leprosy. Leprosy was a chronic infectious disease caused by bacteria, affecting especially the skin and the peripheral nerves. It was characterized by the formation of nodules that enlarged and spread over their body. And it also was accompanied by a loss of sensation with eventual paralysis and the production of deformities. So it was a deadly disease. And, and the thing about it is when somebody had leprosy, they were excommunicated, exiled from the city. You couldn't be amongst us because it was contagious. That's why when we read uh, of the story of Jesus with the ten lepers uh, and he healed them, uh, uh, folks, amen, uh, hadn't seen it on that wise, amen, because usually if you were a leper, you, you were excommunicated and, and they would probably communicate with you but from a distance. There was a king by the name of Isaiah that was smitten with leprosy because he questioned the man of God and the authority of God, and he spent out the rest of his kingship as a leper. So he couldn't even enjoy the blessings of the Lord to this magnitude because he was smitten with leprosy. But here we got four men. They said, look, they don't want us in Syria. They don't want us in Samaria. If we go in Samaria, they're going to kill us. If we go in Syria, first of all, they, they knew the condition and the mindset of the people of Samaria. Don't come up in here. But they hadn't lived in Syria. They said, well, let's go to the Syrian camp. Maybe they'll have mercy on us. 
And if they don't have mercy on us, they're going to kill us. So we're going to die if we stay outside. We're going to die one way or the other. So we might as well take our chances with the enemy. Now, how many know that sometimes God want to bless you through the enemy? So they made a decision. They, they had a, a leper's board meeting. And they made a decision that we're going to go to the Syrian camp. And we're going to pray that God will give us mercy where they'll feed us. That's all we want to do. We just want to feed. We know we're sick. We know we're lepers. You know, we know nobody want to be around us. We know we're the scum of the earth as far as they're concerned. We know we're people that's it's just all we got is each other. So they made that decision and they, and they went into the Syrian camp. And verse 4 says that they said, if we, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You know, so we can understand why Paul would make a statement like Philippians 121, for to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Amen. We can understand why, amen, some of us, amen, have made the decision that, look, I got to practice CDC guidelines uh, with this COVID-19, but if I sit at home, I'm going to die spiritually. If I sit at home and don't acknowledge God, look, if I don't give God any praise, now I know I might be standing on somebody's toes, but I got to preach the way the Lord giving it to me uh, uh, because God is moved by faith, you all. God is moved by uh, your uh, leaning on him. Now, now, I'm not saying you got to be a fool and, and take your mask off and walk around and act like there's nothing going on, but I I am saying at some point in your Christian walk, amen, you got to exercise some faith, amen, and that's what makes you different uh, from the unsaved or from the non-Christian is your hope is in Christ, and if it's your hope in Christ, that means that anything that this world should be smitten with, amen, you trust and believe God that he's going to protect you. Now, I want to say this. This is not in my notes, but I want to say this before I go any further. Now, if the Lord should smite me with COVID-19, I'm saying this is Ronnie Whittier saying this. Hey, man, I'd rather be smitten with COVID-19 doing the will of God than smitten with the COVID-19 not doing the will of God. Because it can come in your home just like it can come in this church. Come on. In other words, what I'm saying is I'd rather be, be with God in a desolate land than without God in a promised land. God has to be the integral point of your decision making and everything in life, not just COVID-19. Not just that. I, I, I don't want you to think because you came to church, that's your ticket to heaven. Because we got to live right every day. We got to, we got to, God said, be ye holy for I'm holy. So you can be a devil that faithfully comes to church. So that, that doesn't mean you on your way to heaven. We still work in this thing. Amen. God has already paid away and gave us salvation, but we still got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We still got to live holy every day. And I don't want you to think for one minute that when COVID-19 hit, that the devil stopped coming to church. <laughs> the devil is one of the most faithful unwanted members in any church. Notice I said unwanted members. So here we have the four lepers. They go into the Syrian camp. And when they get to the Syrian camp, they go to the uttermost part of the camp, and behold, there was no man there. Nobody was there. And verse 6 says, For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians. This is what God this See, God is working on our behalf, even when we don't know that God is doing a particular work. He's working on our, our behalf. So behind the scenes, the Lord of hosts had made the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, see, so sometimes, amen, the enemy don't know what to do, so he starts rationalizing in his own logic and his own mindset. And so they said, lo, the king of the Israel, in other words, King Jehoram has hired somebody. He put a hit on us. He hired against us the kings of the Hittites and, and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. So he, he got connected with the Hittites and the Egyptians, and they set up this allegiance to try to overthrow us. So what they did in verse 7 says, wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. They left, amen, in the break of the day, and they left their tents. They left their tents, you all. They left their horses. 
They figured that we can get out here faster than we had take us to settle these horses up. Amen. So they left their tents, they left their horses, and they left their asses. In other words, the things that they would have been carrying their supplies on, they left that. Even the camp as it was and fled for their life. And verse 8 says, and when these lepers, these four unwanted people, how many times have you felt unwanted? You felt like folks were overlooking you. You felt like, look, what's wrong with me? Everybody overlooking me. But see, God is setting you up and has set you up for a special cause like he did with these four lepers. God had a plan for these four unwanted people. God had a plan for them. God said, nobody wants you. And when I do what I'm going to do, they're going to know that it was me doing it. Because they know that you don't have the financial means to do what I'm about to do. That's why I told you, I prophesied this to you guys, amen, early on in this COVID-19 that a, a number of millionaires is going to rise from the ashes of COVID-19. Watch what I tell you. See, some folks are excited about the stimulus checks that they got uh, and, and all of that, and they feel like that's their rich, amen, but God is looking at that individual. You may not have received one penny from the government yet because God wants to show you that I don't need Donald Trump or anybody else to bless you, amen. If I want to use them, I can use them, but I want to do something special for you. And they're going to know it was me that did it. And so you might have applied for a stimulus check or something, didn't get anything, look like they're overlooking you. Amen. Don't, let not your heart be troubled. I'm telling you. Amen. God wanted, God wanted, when he does what he does, and I know I'm talking to somebody. Y'all can sit quiet all you want. Amen. God wants, when, when he bless you, amen, uh, he want to bless you with a wild kind of blessing. Where people say, wow, amen, I, I didn't know that was, I didn't see that one coming. I'm just telling y'all what the Lord's given me. And even though I'm standing up here being the one talking, but I'm receiving what God is saying through me right now for me. Because I, I'm a prime recipient in my heart for that wild kind of blessing. So I'm not waiting on the next guy to say amen. That's on you. I, I learned how to say amen when I was 13 years old and got saved. I learned how to say amen. So I'm not waiting on the next guy to say amen. So these four unwanted men, these four lepers say, let us go into the camp. And they went into the uttermost part of the camp. They didn't just go right on the inside. They went deep on into it. And sometimes God wants to send you deep into the enemy's territory. And they looked in the tents and they didn't see anything or anybody, should I say, in there. But they did see food. So the Bible tells us that they ate. And then they got some gold and silver. And they went and they, and out of one tent and they went and hid it outside of that camp. And then they went back, ate a little bit more, and then got some more gold and silver and took it back out. And then they said, wait a minute. And how many know sometimes at night and you going, you having a party, hey amen, you know that party got to end at some point. So you can have a Holy Ghost party for those you wonder, what kind of party are you talking about? Because <laughs> you can have a Holy Ghost party and not feel guilty the next morning. I want y'all to know that. But anyway, they understand, wait a minute. If we don't tell Israel about this, then mischief is going to come upon us, and we may die tomorrow. So we can't wait until tomorrow to tell them that the enemy is gone. We need to go into Israel now and tell them that there is nobody in that camp, and there is lots of food there, because remember the folks in Samaria were, were, were starving. There is nobody in there. There's lots of food there. There's nobody there. There's lots of gold and silver there, and when they went and told the folks, they, they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. So the king Jehoram, who doubted God, we saw that. He doubted God in, in, in the sixth chapter of 2 Kings, the 33rd verse. He doubted God. He said, why should I wait on the Lord? Amen. He, in other words, he called God the instigator of this whole thing. And so that's why God had to send Elisha in there to straighten them out and say, no, look, when you guys are disobedient, when you are walking out of my will, then I have to tap you on the shoulder. See, that's why COVID-19 is here. A lot of people still won't accept that. Hey, Amen. they still waiting on somebody or some lab to come up with the remedy when God is saying, the remedy I've given you from the start. Humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. I'll, I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. That's the remedy right there. Hey, Amen. But people, hey, Amen. we got to go through I can tell you about a story, about a book, but until you read it and break it down yourself, amen, you're not going to really understand it. So God said, well, since they're not understanding the summer, summer, summary of the book, then you're going to have to take the book to them and start breaking it down chapter by chapter. So, so when the four lepers went and shared what God had done, 
the, the Israelites didn't believe it. So King George, it started with the king. The king said, oh, this is just a trick. They really waiting on the outside of their camp. So when we go into the camp, then they're going to come in and they're going to kill us. But the lepers had to convince them, no, that's not the case. And so they, so what the king said, well, let me send a few people in there and see if this is true. So they sent a few folks in there. I'm summarizing this. Hey, Amen. Uh, and and, and, and uh, I'm paraphrasing. And, and what they did was send a few folks into the camp. And when they got into the camp, they said, well, king is just like they said. Now, remember, Elisha had prophesied to that one man that you're going to see what comes to pass, but you're not going to be able to enjoy it. And so when they, everybody heard about, hey, the Syrians are gone, the people began to stampede and going into the Syrian camp. And the man that was doubting, that was a king's helper, he got trampled on. He saw all of this happening. He got trampled on. He died. The people trampled him. So he got a chance to see what God had done, but he wasn't able to enjoy it because he doubted God. And a lot of folks are seeing COVID-19 right now. That's the famine that's in the land. And, and the Syria and, and all of the folks that's working with that, they making money off this right now off, the, off of the fear of people. If you don't believe it, go try to buy a bottle of hand sanitizer and see how much it costs. At first it was 99 cents. Now it's $4.99 for a small one. At first, it was $2 for a man a quart. Now it's, it's $10. I was in one store, $10. So folks are making money off of your fear. But God said, look, let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. I've already defeated the Syrians for you. I've already ran them out of the camp. I didn't have to get any man to go in and fight. Not one piece, one, one drop of blood was shed. All I did was send a noise. Sometimes God want to send noise into your life so he can run the enemy out of your life. Because if you don't allow the noise to get in your life, you think everything is cool. So sometimes God got to make things topsy-turvy for you. He got to shake up your camp so you can start praying like you're supposed to. He shake up your house so you can start fasting like you should. Amen. He shake up things that you were once comfortable with. Amen. So he can uh, start dealing with you. And when God starts dealing with you, amen, then you say, now I see why I went through what I went through. Now I see why I was crying so much. Now I see why I was wearing so much. Now I see why my friends turned their backs on me. Now I see why I was my refrigerator was empty. Now I see why the cupboard was empty. Now I see why they laid me off. Now I see why folks turned their back on me. Now I see why my bank account is a, a negative. Because God said, I don't want you to think you doing it. So I'm going to take everything that you got uh, and wipe it clean. So when I start blessing you, uh, you're going to know it wasn't you that did it. Uh, so when I start showering you down with blessings, uh, and see, God did exactly what that one guy said he wouldn't do. God did open up heaven. God sent a word, and the enemy ran off. God sent a noise, the enemy ran out. And he blessed the Israelites to have everything they needed. Why should I sit here and die? Why should I wait on Putin to try to corner the market, amen, on, come on, on COVID-19 vaccine? Why should I wait, amen? I need to be praising God now. With my mask on, I need to praise him now. With my social distancing, I need to praise him now. With my trials and tribulations are still coming, I need to praise him now. Because if I don't learn how to praise God through COVID-19, I, 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 I can't believe God through any other pandemic. Hallelujah. You better praise him now. In 1918, that plague lasted. It was two years, two years, you all, before they had a vaccine for that. But the saints didn't stop praying. In 1918, they didn't stop fasting. If the whole world had stopped, we wouldn't be here talking about them. Somebody got to rise up above fear and say, Lord, I'm calling on you. Even if my church don't call on you, I'm going to call on you, Lord. Even if my neighborhood don't call on you. Somebody got to rise above the fear and praise God anyhow. Come on here. Come on, we, we got a, about five minutes left here. Why should I sit here and die, first lady? 
If I praise God like I should, he's going to bless me anyhow. If I don't praise God, the enemy going to say, see, I knew it wasn't nothing to your salvation. It was nothing to your Christianity. But I want to serve notice on the devil today. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going to preach the hell out of the world. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to pray the hell out of the world. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to witness to this hellish world that Jesus is alive and well. First lady, we can't stop doing what God anointed us to do. We can't act like God is dead. He got more power than the Syrian army. We can't act like God is incompetent. He got more power than the Israelite army. We can't act like God is dead. He's greater than BJC, more powerful than Boeing, more effective than Veterans Hospital, more effective than any company that you think got it going on. He's bigger than Apple. He's bigger than Google. He's greater than Facebook. He's outdoing, outdoing Instagram. He's greater than any Fortune 500 company because the earth is the Lord's and the food is the earth and all they that dwell therein. Woo. Hallelujah. Y'all got to excuse me. But I was raised to trust God. My mama sitting over there, unless she was lying to me, I believe what she told me when she said, wait on God. Unless my daddy was lying to me, I believed they messed around and created a believer. I believe God. I believe God. In the midst of COVID-19, I believe God. Woo! I believe God. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. And don't you forget it. So God will use a little preacher from Walnut Park, just like he used the four lepers. They were on the outside. Folk didn't want them in this city. And the Syrian didn't want them in their camp. But they said, we got to do something. Look, you can't hang your praise and worship and do nothing with it. I don't know about you, but I start pacing the floor. I start saying, Lord, now I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me. Lord, I didn't preach too many messages about how good you are. I told too many people that you can do anything but fail. I witnessed to too many people about your goodness. Lord, I'm still a praiser. I'm still a worshiper. But sometimes I don't feel like praising and worshiping because when I look on this side, the saints are not praising. I look on that side, the saints are afraid and the world is doing whatever they want to do. But you know what the Lord told me first thing? He said, pick up your praise and anoint yourself with your praise and worship. And you worship me like you never heard about COVID-19. You praise me like I've already worked it out. Because in the very, I'm a very present help. In the time of trouble, I can't be your God if you can't see me for who I am. Because there's nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for the Lord. Y'all got to excuse me. But God is better than that. God is better than your fear. God is better than your logic. Some folks think they got God figured out. You are lie straight from hell. You don't have my God figured out. You may have yourself figured out. But the word of God tells me, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways 
And my thoughts, uh, then your thoughts. So you don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something. Look here. Trust me when I tell you this. God is doing something. See, first of all, let me explain something to you. The Bible never said that the world would be ended by COVID-19. And I know over 170,000 Americans have died, and there are folks all over the world that has died. But one thing I understand is we got to preach this thing, and we got to live this thing 24-7. See, some folks think they got what you got. God anointed you with a certain faith. And I'm talking to some folks at home, too. God has anointed them with a certain faith. And everybody's situation is different, so I'm not saying, I'm not just preaching to folks in this room, because there's folks outside of this room that God is using. I want you to know that. So it's not a us-them thing, so get that out of your spirit. But, I, but one thing I do want you to know is the world is so topsy-turvy and so intermingled that folks can't tell who's saved and who's not saved. But look, if I had a, a clear container... And I turned my back. I had two clear containers. And I turned my back with sugar, a, a, a box of sugar and a box of salt. And I put salt and sugar in, in, in either one of those containers and set it up here and ask you which one is the salt and which one is sugar. Somebody may guess the right thing, but in all truthfulness, salt and sugar look alike. You don't know which one is until you taste it. And that's why the Lord said, oh, taste. Come on, that ain't nothing. That's a, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, y'all. Don't get hung up on that trumpet. For, keep, let me keep your attention. That's nothing. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And some folks is just looking at the salt and the sugar, but they have not tasted which is which. My Bible tells me that he's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. But first lady, until I tasted, I wouldn't know that. And just a side verse in my closing, just a side verse for you. If you look at Psalm number 27, verse number 13, the psalmist says, I had fainted lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I had fainted, y'all. Unless the Lord showed me, remember these lepers? There was a famine in that land, and COVID-19 is not a surprise to him. It's scaring us. It's not scaring him. And we think that God is equal to us. That's what got us in trouble. But he's our God. COVID-19 will kill a human being, but COVID-19 diminishes at the presence of the, of the Lord. In Psalm 114, verse 5 and 6, it says, Oh, what L D O thou see that thou fleddest, joint that thou was driven back, ye mountains that you skipped like rams, and little hills like lambs. Amen. God is saying, when he's present, anything that's not like him got to get out of his way. I promise you, I found the cure to COVID-19. I, I want to get it on camera that I, I have truly found the cure. Come on. I found the cure to COVID-19, you all. And, and y'all know what I've been telling you all along. Hosea 4 and 6. I found it in my Bible. <laughs> if my people that's called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And see what? When you, when you put a vaccine together, I used to work in a pharmacy. Many of you guys don't know that. And I made what they call TPNs, which stands for Total Parental Nutrition. And then the TPNs is uh, uh, something that they prepare for people that can't eat solid foods and not even mushy foods or whatever. So they have to feed them intravenously with the electrolytes that they need in order for their body to stay healthy. So they have what they call total parental nutrition. Amen. And so on the total parental nutrition, it consists of various vitamins and, and, and things that go into that human body that's necessary to make us live and be able to stay alive and so that's what God has done 
when he put all of us together. Amen. We need some iron. We need some magnesium. We need, amen, uh, uh, all of those other electrolytes. Amen. I'm, I've been out of the game for a while. But all those other electrolytes that's necessary, amen, for us to be healthy. And one time I did a little study, you all, and this was back in the 80s. I remember preaching a message back in the 80s. And I did a little study and uh, uh, see how much of the electrolytes that go actually go into a human body, what, what the various vitamins, what a, amount it is, and and then the dollar amount to what that would cost. And at that time in the 80s, it was $1.87. It cost $1.87 for God to take certain ingredients that he made, put together in some dirt, breathe into that dirt the breath of life, and it become a living soul. So the ingredients for COVID-19 vaccine is every last one of us. Your prayers. Your faith. I'm telling you, your prayers and your faith. Because when you talk to that person, they say, oh, girl, I don't want to hear that. You got to stop listening to that kind of craziness. A lot of us listen to people, and I'm, I'm done. We listen to people talk negative, and they think they right because you don't be the witness you should be. You let them have the last say. You, you got to do, and my wife know I love her, but she when we get into a, a debate, I don't care if I got it on proof on paper. She gonna keep doing this, yeah, but. And, and really, you gotta you gotta have that kind of mentality when somebody is out talking you. You gotta have that mentality when you say, well, well uh, Dr. Fauci said this, but you gotta say, yeah, but Jesus said that. <laughs> Trump said inject yourself, but you said, but Jesus said this. I'm telling you, hey amen, you got to have that locked in kind of mentality that there's nothing too hard for God. You got to have locked that in your spirit. I don't care what they say. And I'm not saying don't practice safe CDC guidelines. I've never said that. So don't leave her telling anybody I said you don't need to practice safe CDC guidelines. I never said that. I said practice safe CDC guidelines, but stay prayerful. Keep fasting. Keep seeking God. Social distance like you should. Amen. But also be known for, I never stop trusting God. I never stop believing God. You got to keep that. I'm telling you, this is a powerful message. Why, why should we sit here and die? I mean, why should you just sit? I'm going to sit at home until they find a vaccine. Putin know you waiting on that. So he got on the Russian president. Got on. I've been to the Red Square in Moscow. Amen. And it looks good there, but let me tell you, those beautiful Disneyland-looking castles and stuff you see, there's a guy by the name of Ivan the Terrible that had those constructed. I'm going to stay up here because I don't want anybody to come, come spit on you. <laughs> Ivan the Terrible, amen, had those constructed. And the, this is what he did. With the designers of those beautiful castles and stuff you see in the Red Square and the Kremlin is right there next to it. After they finished designing, he asked the designers, he said, do you think that you can do this again? And they said, of course, yes. And then they said, so you, he said to them, Ivan the Turbo said, so you think you can go anywhere in the world and do a duplicate of this? They said, sure, we can. You know what he did? He had their eyes put out. He had their eyes put out because he didn't want anybody to have anything that looked similar to what he had them to design. So he had their eyes put out. And then in that beautiful castle, you see right on the top, there's one window. And that one window is where Ivan the Terrible would go and look down. They had an area down near the Red Square, still gated off there, where they would take people and put them to death. And so he would sit up there and watch people get beheaded and killed from that beautiful looking castle. So everything that's looking good don't mean it's good, you all. Know the story behind the story. Know the story behind the story. That's, that's why I say, get in your books. This is an excellent time for you, amen, to start doing some historical research on why you a Christian. Don't say, let me tell, get my pastor, he'll tell you. No, you need to have an answer for yourself. And I want to say this to you guys that God has anointed you with an office. I'm, I'm through preaching. But God has anointed you with an office, whether it be an usher, a deacon, a minister, uh, uh, whatever God has called you to do. You better be about our Father's business and stop 
If you say God called you, then you're going to do what he called you to do. But if you don't believe he truly called you, this is the time to respectfully bow out and say I was lying all that time. Because right now, we're in the midst of a test. It's a test. This is a test. That's what it is. And I know some people will say, oh, he was okay till he got right there. Well, remember, you didn't call me. God called me. First lady and I did a, we did a lesson on this past Thursday on the table talk, called to serve. And if you are a born-again Christian, you were called to serve. Not to just sit back and watch other people work and, and critique them. I'll oh, see, they ain't right. I knew he wasn't right. In Girl, pass me the popcorn. Now, what are you doing? What, what have you done for Jesus lately? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? Why, why are you sitting there dying? Come on. If you're a poet, you need to be doing some poetry. If you're a praise dancer, and you ain't got to touch nobody, no sweat, no spit, you don't have to say one word. Dance to the glory of God. Sing to the glory of God. Preach to the glory of God. Tell that poem to the glory of God. I burn that spirit that's giving you fear. I burn that spirit to tell you to stop praising and worshiping and preaching and singing and testifying to the glory of God. I burn that spirit in the name of Jesus. You better give God the praise that he deserves. Because you robbing God. You causing somebody to miss an anointing that God want to save them because you letting fear control you. You letting fear control you. Stop it. You listening to what they call the professionals. But many of them professionals don't know Jesus. They don't even believe in God. Many of them. Not everybody. And all I want to say to you, if you're a Christian like those lepers, they knew we lepers. Nobody want us around. But we can do some good. We're going to go tell. That's all they had to do was go tell the king. Man, there's food, gold and silver and horses and donkeys and everything else still in that camp. And that's all God is saying to us. Just tell them. He'll do the rest. Remember after they told the king, then the story, the lepers, we don't hear anything else about them. After they told the king, then we hear what the king did. And all I'm saying to you is tell them and let God do the rest. So don't, you can't make somebody be saved. You can't make somebody come to church. And God knows I'm not trying to. Man, I sleep good at night. I do. I sleep good. First lady there to tell you. We can sit down and say we're going to watch a movie. And before the credits is over. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the introductory credits. Right now you say we're going to watch this movie. I know I just had a rough day today. Thank God for a pause button. Rewind. <laughs> and see, but God will do that too when we fall asleep. God say, I'm going to hit rewind. I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to hit the pause button. Because the rate you're going, the bad guy going to win. But I'm going to hit the rewind button <laughs> and let you do it like you should. I'm going to ask if we have anyone that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the parting of your sins. Amen. You can stand right now. And give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me see the jacket, James. Hey Amen. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Thank you, sir. There's nothing too hard for the Lord, you all. Amen. I, I want you to forget that. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Maybe we have someone that backslid. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You can stand where you are. Hey Amen. We'll pray a prayer of faith. I'm not going to ask you to come to an altar. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to even touch you. But I believe God can touch you where you, touch you, where you are. Well, I'm going to ask you if you would just bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for being good. We thank you, O God, that we don't have to sit here until we die. But, Father, you've given us life and that more abundantly. And we pray that you'll bless us to be about our Father's business, to tell the world about you, O God, to testify to your glory. Lord, and that we will, Lord, put our hands to the gospel plow and never look back. And, Lord, that you will always be honored in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. In John 15 and 8, it says, amen, Jesus said, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Every last one of us should be bearing some fruit. Every last one of us. And I don't care how insignificant you may feel like, man, I'm just an apple tree. I really wish I was an orange tree. Well, look, God got apples, oranges, bananas, pomegranates, and all of those things, and, and every all of it, somebody needs, and there's somebody like. And if you if you are a smoothie king or queen, and you say, or vegan, or whatever you do, amen, the ingredients in your diet is something that God put there. And all of us, whether we big, small, thin, light, dark, whatever the case may be, amen, we all need some water. Come on. And what I'm saying is, we all have to survive off of some of the same things. And so don't think that, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to glide into heaven and I'm going to be in perfect health. And you know what? That may be the case. But should the Lord call you tonight and you say, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very healthy. The doctor gave me a good, clean bill of health. That doesn't mean you won't die. I, I want to remind you. All that means is when you die, because the word of God tells us in Hebrews 9, 30, or 27, it's appointed unto man once to die, after that the judgment. When you die, all the doctor be able to say is, this person was healthy. But they died. Because at some point, we're going to have to give up the ghost. But in the meantime, and in the between time, and I hope I'm not scaring you, I'm just stating the fact. In the meantime, and in the between time, you need to be about our father's business. Cut out the he say, she say, cut out all of the sideline foolishness that you've been acting in your life, and just say, look, man, I'm, my eyes is set towards heaven. I don't have time for foolishness. I, I'm, I'm operating on borrowed time. All of us are. All of us in no parking zone. And as soon as the Holy Ghost parking meter come, uh, meter may come through, you got to be moving. I'm talking about that's the angel of death. Amen. But Jesus has given us power over the enemy, and we need to exercise that. Amen. I want to encourage you, amen, to join us in those prayer services, 12 noon to 1, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. On, 7 p.m. on Wednesday, 6 p.m. on Thursday to 7 p.m. Amen. Also on Sunday morning, Saturday morning is at 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Also, join us in our Bible study on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. Join us in our table talk on Thursday at 7 p.m. Then, of course, we're back here on Sunday mornings at 11.45. Stay prayerful. Stay watchful. Amen. Don't sit until you die. Write a book. Write a book of poetry. Put, don't, if the devil blocked up a road here, then say, oh, I'm taking this avenue. Amen. Do something with your ministry, but don't sit on it. Come on. It shouldn't be dust on it. It shouldn't be where if all of the Christians got together at one time and blew the dust off their Bible, that it'll be a dust storm in the world. It shouldn't be like that. Come on. You need to, your pages need to be oily with oil from your fingers on the pages of your Bible. Or your hands need to be tired from you searching the scriptures. And your knees need to be rusty from you being on your prayer and, and waiting on God and calling on God. I'm telling you, every last one of us, starting with myself, we got something to do. Amen. I want to thank God for each and every one of you. I love you. Thank God for your prayers. I thank God for, amen, everybody, because everybody is somebody in God's house. And I want to let you know that God is not through blessing you. I want to thank the Lord for the pop-up prayer on yesterday. Amen. It was here. They, we were giving away uh, toys. Uh, not toys. I mean school supplies. Amen. And uh, things like that. Light bulbs. I don't know if they still got some left. But if the next pop-up be at the next pop-up prayer and say, give me a light bulb and a pencil or whatever, uh, whatever the case, uh, whatever the situation is. Amen. But you can get what you need to get anytime you put your hands to doing something to the glory of God. Amen. Because everybody got something to do. Deacons, keep on deaconing. Remember Stevie Wonder song, preachers, keep on preaching. I'm living by that, and I'm going to die by that. I might die with a mic in my hand. He took the text and dropped it, or he finished the message. and dropped. Whatever the case is, First Lady, I'm going to be doing what God called me to do. And you can call me crazy, amen, all you want. But I, I'd rather be God's fool because everybody plays a fool sometimes. And so my question is, whose fool are you? I'd rather be a fool for God, amen? Now, Emmanuel Temple, amen, 
There's a church in the community that relentlessly unleashed to the world the power of God's word one verse at a time. Amen. And I want to encourage you to keep on trusting God. Be kind one to another. In the midst of this chaos, I want you to stay prayerful and watchful and don't sit until you die. I want you to register to vote. Make sure you go out and vote. Because my mindset is, if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. You can sign up for the absentee uh, uh, ballot now. You can go do that now. Hey, man, uh, me and my wife and family, we went out and did that already so we can do vote absentee. Hey, Amen. But we're not going to let crowds or anything stop us because we vote very faithfully. Hey, Amen. We, if we didn't do that, we'd be in the line at 530 in the morning. That's the time we head to vote and poll. And we waiting in line. And we just know it's going to be an a influx of people. So we just getting stuff in order. But I'm encouraging you to vote. Amen. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but I'm asking you to ask, pray to God and ask the Lord to show you who to vote for. Amen. So again, stay saved, stay sanctified, stay focused. Make sure that you live in that godly life and let your light shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand praise, everybody. Come on, somebody praise him. He certainly works.